Hello everyone, Simon3D here and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're gonna make this gas stove flame effect in Blender. As always, this effect is fully procedural so you can control where the flame shows with an empty object as well as the flame size as well. So you can make some really cool animations with all this and there is a couple more controls that you can adjust in this node tree. As you can see, it's not very complicated. So let's see how it's done. For that, let's jump into empty blender scene and let's start by creating the mesh plane, which is gonna be our single flame. Now let's drag in another workspace. Let's make it shader editor. With this plane selected, let's create new material. Now first let's delete the principal BSDF, we don't need that. And let's create the usual setup that I have in all my videos. So emission, transparent and mix shader, like so. And now let's get some gradient texture node here. And if you have the node wrangler enabled, just click Ctrl T and also click N to get rid of this panel. Here the important part is that you take the texture coordinates from UV and change the mapping type from point to texture. Now in this viewport, let's switch to rendered and let's preview our mapping node. As you can see the coordinates start here in the corner, but ideally we would like it to be on the bottom, but in the middle of the plane. So in order to adjust that, simply type in 0.5 in location Y. And that is because for the flame, in the gradient texture we will choose spherical, and if you preview that, you can see that the sphere starts now from this point. And if we go back to zero, as it originally was, the origin point of the sp sphere would be here, which is not ideal. So let's put 0.5 back here, and let's add some extra nodes to control the scale. You may know this setup from my previous tutorials. It's again the same value, math node, and they combine XYZ. This way we will easily be able to control just one axis of the scale, but alternatively you could just change the value up here. I just feel like this setup is more comfortable to use and not so confusing. So let's change the math node from add to divide and plug the value right here and then divide goes into y while the value goes into x and z as well. Now we can plug all of this into our mapping scale. Let's go back to one in here and as you increase the divide value, you can see that our sphere gets thinner and thinner and it starts to look like a single flame, which is perfect for our purpose. Let's make it thinner, something like maybe 4.5 and we can move on. Stop right there. Here is me from the future and I forgot to mention and for some of you this may not be obvious, but this value right here also controls the size of the flame, but not in terms of scale, but in terms of the flame life cycle, because if you scale up or down the plane with the flame, then you will get a small flame but still with the whole gradient from blue to yellow. But this value lets you control the size of the flame in that when you make the flame small, it will be blue because it's still the gas burning. So just keep that in mind. If you want this like fine effects of the flame naturally growing, then you want to use this value for animation, not just the scaling. And the scale here is pretty simple. One is the fully developed flame and zero is no flame at all, and it just grows from zero to one. So let's go back to the tutorial, sorry for the confusion. And we can move on to creating this little hole in the middle that gives us the effect of burning gas. So for that we will need another gradient texture, so simply duplicate this one, shift D, move it a little bit higher, plug it to the same mapping node, and here after the gradient texture we will need two math nodes, one set to power, and another right after it set to multiply. Let's plug that all together. Now let's preview that multiply, and as you increase the exponent value in the power node, you can see that our shape gets much much softer edges and our multiply is gonna make it more contrasty without increasing the area of the cutout. So now in order to cut one shape from another, another math node, this time set it to subtract and we want to subtract this small shape from this big one. So simply connect the big one on top, the smaller on the bottom. For better visualization, you can also bring this gradient texture up here so that it's visually on the top. And then the result should to give you something like this. Now to control the cutout, you simply need to adjust the power and the multiply value. So make it a little bit softer, so bring the multiply down, power a little bit like this. I found that those values work pretty well, but you can make it your own flame. Let's move those out of the way because we will need a little bit more space and also put those in frame. So later you'll know what you're doing when you will come back. So hit Ctrl J with the node selected and now N to get this tab back and in the label type in flame cutout hole because that's what it's doing and here the power when you click on the node you can give it custom label as well the power is the whole size and the multiply is the whole edge contrast 
Not sure how to name it better, maybe some native can help me out out here. So let's plug in our subtract result to our mix shader factor, let's preview the mix shader here in the material tab again, like in my previous tutorials, change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend, shadow mode can go to none, doesn't really matter, and as you can see we have the cutout on the outside, but here the middle still stays black, and an easy fix for that is to simply check in clamp in our subtract, which is gonna clamp the values to 0 and 1. Nothing below, nothing above, which is perfect what we need, because this is the mask that's just driving the opacity. So let's go back to the mix shader now, and we can make this window smaller, as we will work in the viewport. Here also let's move this out of the way, so it doesn't distract us, and create new object. I recommend sitting there, but it can be any shape that you want this flame to appear around. In terms of gas stoves, they are usually circular, that's why cylinder. Let's go into edit mode and now delete everything except the top face. So click the top face, Ctrl I to invert the selection, X, faces. Now because we don't really care about this face over here, you can as well go and select this face, click X and only faces, so that you are left with just the ring of vertices. Now we can exit the edit mode and go into the particle properties. A good practice is also to name things, so let's do it right now. That's gonna be our flame emitter and the plane is our single flame. Now with the flame emitter selected, in the particle properties simply click plus to add a particle system. Few things important here. First of all, render tab change render as from halo to object and the object you can either choose from the list single flame or you can use this eyedrop button and select it in the viewport set the scale to one and as you click play on the timeline you can see that the particles are being spawned just not in the way that we would like so now let's move into the physics tab and change physics type from Newtonian to Boyd's, which is great for creating lots of different things. Maybe in the future I will explore some more use cases for, it, for this physics type because it's really cool when I was playing with it. Let me know in the comment if you'll be interested to seeing more of those. Change the mass to something ridiculous like 50 kilograms and in the movement sub tab turn down the max air acceleration and max angular velocity all to zero. Now a little bit higher you have the source tab change emit from faces to vertices. As you can immediately see it's being rendered now from the vertices which is perfect. The only problem now is the rotation of our flame. And for that close the physics tab in the render tab. In instance object you have to check in object rotation. Great, so that's done. Now if you select a single flame you can see that the pivot of the, of the object is right in the middle, which is not ideal, not really what we want. So you can change it in two ways. You can either go into the edit mode and then simply move the plane up so that the origin point is right at the bottom of the flame. That will make it appear in the intended way. Or you can go into these options here and check origins, which now will only move the origins when you will try to move the object. So if you hit G, then you only move the origins of the object. So you can use whatever, just make sure that the origin of the object is right at the base of the flame. Now as you can see this flame is way too big for the size of our oven top or whatever it has to be emitted from. So there's two ways you can fix that. Either make this emitter bigger just so that those flames sit nicely and tightly next to each other or just turn down the scale of the flame. I prefer it big so I'll keep it like so. As you can see this already starts to resemble the gas flame, but it still appears and disappears quite randomly uh, as the timeline progresses and we will fix that a little bit later. Now let's focus on the flame looking like the flame. So first of all our flame mesh, let's select that, go into the edit mode and with Ctrl R add some subdivisions to the plane, 4 is probably enough and now go to the side view, hit Ctrl Z to make sure that you're selecting both of those vertices not just the one that you're looking at and start making this flame sort of this curved shape. I just feel it's more appropriate for a flame to look like this. Now if we go back in here you can see that the particle effect gets updated immediately so just keep an eye on both of them and adjust it until you feel satisfied with the look of it. So for me it's something like this, now it has a little bit of curvature, looks way more natural. Right and now with the single flame selected, let's make the shader editor bigger again and give the flame a little bit more noise, a little bit more unpredictability. So let's bring in a noise texture node and plug it into the mapping node like this. Now in order to make this noise affect our flames, we will need to multiply that with the mask that we already have. So add another math node, set it to multiply, 
plug in the subtract on one, noise texture here, and then this result is gonna be our mix shader mask. As you can see, something started to happen, but now we need to also animate that as well. So change the noise texture from 3D to 4D, and change the scale to something smaller, maybe like 2, and as we will manipulate this W value, you can see that the flame gets affected, but right now every single flame gets affected in the same way, and that's not ideal. So in order to give it a little bit of randomization, we will need a object info node, a value node, and also a math node as well. Simply plug object info random to one socket of the math node and value to another one, and then the result of the value to the W value from the noise texture node. And now in this value that is connected to the math node, we can simply create a driver that will change the value based on the animation frame. Type in hashtag frame divided by 25 and as you can see it starts moving but a little bit too slow so maybe divided by smaller number like 10 good for now you can adjust it later and also let's bring a color ramp right after the noise texture to control the flickering of the flame let's push those nodes back because we will need a little bit more space let's bring this one here give it a frame as well this is a flame irregularity slash noise so that later you know which nodes are responsible for what now for the third let's say branch of this node tree is gonna be the color and for that we will need a gradient texture Control t to get new mapping node and texture coordinates set it to uv again and the mapping type from point to texture this time the gradient texture will stay at linear and let's add a color ramp right after it plug it in here and we can plug that color ramp straight into the emission color now as you can see this color ramp directly corresponds to the colors of the flame, so the black is on the bottom, white is on the top, so let's make it look more like gas flame, so the bottom is gonna be something blue, and the top is gonna be something orange. Now to fine tune this, let's add another node here, change the interpolation from linear to bispline, change this color to something more bluish as well. Now you can spend a lot of time just tweaking those colors in, I'll just leave it like that to not make this tutorial an hour long. Now a few extra things we can do to improve the look of it is add a mix RGB node and connect it right before the emission, change the type from mix to overlay and connect mask to the color 1 and the color 2 is gonna be our color ramp. Now bring in the factor all the way up and in the emission strength let's bump it up to something like 10 and go to the render settings and enable bloom for this nice glowy effect or maybe 15 a little bit better. Now we can also go back to the noise texture and work a little bit on that noise. I recommend bringing the roughness all the way down and then play with the scale whether you want this effect to be softer or maybe more hectic up to you. I will leave it at 1.5 and just like that we're done with the shader you can spend way more time here adjust all those things however you like but we will move now into the particle effect itself to make it appear and disappear in more natural way as well as we'll also set up the empty object that will control where the flame is spawned so let's select our particle effect go into the particle properties and the frame start let's set to minus 50 so that the effect is gonna be always up and the end frame set to 250 or whichever frame your animation ends at, the rest can stay as it is for now. Now let's scroll all the way down to the textures tab and with the first one selected let's click new. Now everything disappeared of course but don't worry about it, give it some cool name and let's move on into the texture tab itself. Now with our texture selected here, let's change tab to blend. Now go into this influence tab and deselect general time and instead select size. Now as you can see this is something close to what we want. Now we just need an empty object to control that. So shift A, create empty, plane axis is fine, let's bring it higher, make it a little bit bigger as well, and let's jump back to our particles and here still in this texture tab, go down and in the mapping tab, change the coordinates from generated to object, and the object, let's choose the empty that we just created. Now as you can see when you move the empty, the flame hides and pops up as we move it across. Now that is because this texture in here, black and white represents the size of our particles so black is size 0 and white is size 1 and you can imagine this empty sort of carrying this texture like a blanket and covering the flame and uncovering as it moves through the world or rather 3d space in this case now what we can adjust here let's go down into colors enable the color ramp open it up let's click this and add an alpha of one so that we know what we can see better what we're doing and you can control the gradient itself so that when you move it all the way up here 
then it's much sharper, so the flames basically just appear and disappear much quicker, sort of like a real stove would do. That's one more thing that you have a control over, so go crazy. Now another cool detail that we can do is make these flames appear more naturally, because right now you can see there is some flickering right here. So again, click on the particle system, go into the particle properties, scroll down again, create a new texture, and this is gonna control the birth of our particles. Again, jump back into the texture editor. Here, make sure that you're changing now the birth, not the bob. Go into the influence and turn off general time and turn on size. And this time in coordinates, change from generated to per strand and particle. And you can already see that these flames are now raising from the proper positions and sort of blend with the already existing flame. And with this color ramp, you can control the speed at which these new particles are being born. So I like to keep it rather fast, but not too fast, maybe like 0.1. Now one thing that you may want to do as well, and you may not be sure how, is right now if you move the empty, it only moves on one axis, whether it's X or Y, because you can rotate it on the Z axis as well, but it only works in a straight line, it removes uh, the flame. But for some people, maybe that's not ideal, so you can go into the progression, again, make sure that you're in the first texture, controlled by empty, in my case it's Bob, and change the progression from linear to spherical, and this will basically create an invisible sphere around this empty, and whenever the vertices is gonna be inside of this sphere, it's gonna produce the flame, and when it's out, it's not. You can also make this sphere bigger by simply scaling the empty itself. So for some people it may be useful, I don't know, just letting you know that it's out there and you can control it as well. And one thing to keep in mind, in our case we had the cylinder with 32 vertices, which means there's 32 places where the flames grow from. But in your case you may want the more vertices, more flames to be spawned. Just make sure that in the particle system editor you have the number of particles high enough so that you will not run out of flame. And yeah, I think that is it for the whole tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something valuable, and make sure to share with me all of your creations. Link to my Twitter is in the description, I would really love to see what you come up with. Also as always, the file for the intro scene is on my Gumroad for free, so you can get it there. Link for that in the description as well, and I guess I will see you in the next video. Oh, and you know, like, subscribe, comment, all the things I forgot to mention before, but well, you know how it works.